Like the spirits do a ritual to get yeah. lightning to strike yeah. right there, then they all take in that energy. They were literally like zombies walking in and walking out. Patty's doing that thing right now. She's doing it, guys. Uh, oh no, uh -oh. she's about to rock <laughs> someone's world. <laughs> He's outside and he watches in through a window and there's shade and light and shade and light like a divided light window. Do you remember having bad dreams? A lot of my dreams come true now, so I try to avoid that. Calling all my wardian, guardians and wards, we're done, we're done. Oh my God, somebody spontaneous combusting on my, that doesn't, that's not good. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. I hope, I hope you're ready to have a fun time. This is like our only uh, third outdoor show. Um, so no one will be drenched in sweat. Yeah. Like we have been. Yeah. Yeah. You guys <laughs> wouldn't believe how many haunted locations don't have AC. <laughs> It's wild. We have a, a pretty a pretty cool show uh, tonight because not only do we have stories that have been written and submitted by those in the audience who we will be bringing on stage to hear more about, some stories that we have never heard anything like before, but we also have our friend Patty Negri who will be joining us later. And we also have a very fun game. Yes, we have a game. That we're going to be playing. We played a few games throughout tour. This might be... My favorite. It's my favorite game. It's it's a fun game, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. We hope you guys like it too. But it's only fitting. It's so we chose to play this game tonight, not really realizing where we are at a prison, and it's like the perfect game to play at a prison, and it does not involve soap. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah surprisingly. <laughs> Okay, could we just talk about what just happened in the motorhome for one second? Because okay. I did not realize that was a thing that we could do. Yeah, no, I'm 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 not done with that. So long story short, guys. So I put on my crystal necklace earlier, right when we got here, and it fell off. It's gone, and it's a it's a crystal that my parents got me, and so I'm very sad. And so I'm telling Patty, and I'm like, I don't know where it is. I'm searching the motorhome. So what does Patty do? She pulls out dowsing rods. <laughs> And no, no, it's genius. And so she's literally asking, like, where are they? Like, where is the crystal? And the dowsing rods pointed to my bed. So I that's that's a realistic place for it to be. So literally, as soon as we're done tonight at like seven in the morning, <laughs> I'm gonna spend like 30 minutes just flipping the mattress searching for it. I like that you could have bought an air tag, but instead you flew out Patty with her dowsing rods. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, where is my iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Just spend part. the forty dollars, dude. And buy an I know. Air I know. I know. I should have done that. Okay. So should we get into this game right off the bat? So the way this game works is, it's a game I made up uh, about a year ago, and it's called Your Honor. Uh, and the principle of the game is, someone up here will be a judge, uh, but there's only room in hell for one person. And each of us will then pick a person, a famous person, a place where we were arrested, and just like a ridiculous, paranormal, demonic crime that we've committed. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of uh, make a plea and yeah. a case as to why we shouldn't be sent to hell. Exactly. So we're going to read some stories, but first we want to bring someone on stage who has helped shape the Overnight Channel and helped us kind of improve as paranormal investigators. So please give a big warm welcome to Patty Negri, everyone. <laughs> Oh, you good? Are, are you? It's a little dizzy in here. It's a little dizzy? Okay. Yeah. And no, I'm not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so thank you for having me. Yeah, that was weird. I just got me up here. Ghost. You, uh, can you hold the mic way closer? Thank you very yeah. much. Ghost, you know. So not clumsy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts? Like, you feel dizzy, like, from the space that we're in right now? Yes. Yes. What are you feeling right now then? Um, right now, I felt it in the laundry room a little bit. I felt a little bit. And then I was fine standing back here watching you guys laughing and everything. And then about six feet over there, right behind you over there, um, I just kind of went like kind of through a little energy thing or something. Just through a little energy thing. Okay. So I saw those stairs going, these are easy stairs. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm psychic too. <laughs> so you saw that coming. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And this is your first time here, correct? Yes. This is my first time here completely. I've, I've always wanted to come. So this is exciting. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is it, honestly, if you haven't been here before, um, and you like, you're not doing the investigation with us tonight or whatever that is, like, make it a point to come back here. Uh, this building is buildings. This place is amazing. Um, and I would say the sooner you can come back, the better. Because when we were here four months ago, we were able to get into the admin building, but then now that roof has started collapsing. And the original location we were going to host this live show in was right there in the church, but it was struck by lightning. Um, so we couldn't do it in there anymore. So make sure you, if you want to see this place, like in the maximum extent of it, I would say come back as soon as you can. Uh, it's really, really, really cool here and the history of it as well. Makes yeah. you dizzy. So, yeah. <laughs> Does it feel heavy? Um, I, it wasn't even quite heavy. It was a little heavy when in the laundry room when I went kind of actually weirdly by the, the urinals and the bathroom area, water. Um, but it was just like that ship feeling, you know, that like mm. I'm on water ship mm, thing. Yeah. It wasn't heavy. It was m almost opposite of that. Like vertigo? Kind of like a vertigo. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens yes. tonight during the investigation yeah. then. Yeah. If you're already feeling it Everybody here. Everybody falling all over. No. Oh my we'll God. Get... We're going to break so many tools tonight. <laughs> oh God. Bam, everything to the floor. Yeah. I, I have a quick question. Okay. So you, how we just said that got struck by lightning. Yeah. Do you think that's paranormal? I think it, can be paranormal not everything is but energy is energy electricity is energy we know spirits are energy energy the spirits can you know make light bulbs flash they 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 make phones go off so <laughs> it's crazy so it really could be if if they're at a really active place that's got a lot of energy other than the fact that it's going to hit the tallest point because that's just what lightning does um i think just even like ghosts like if, if some ghost is walking by somebody's house somebody's apartment they look at one person and they're asleep and they're not a believer and then they walk by the next person they're some super stick and they get up to somebody and it's like anybody in this space right here they go "Ooh, they believe they can see they're going to stop there so maybe that's the same with electricity. Mm, Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I know this place has definitely been struck by lightning a few times because I know in one of these buildings there's chimneys, but they also double as like a lightning stack mm. to it. So it's meant to kind of absorb that uh, as a wave from the building. So I wonder, like, it's super common here, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I wonder if those two go together. In I would think so. place. Like, I wonder if the lightning increased as the the more negative oh. stories existed. As if, like, the more negative energy was manifested here, created here, or stayed here, the more often lightning found its home here. Could l lightning striking give the spirits more energy? Could oh my they God. feed they off of that light? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. They're like, like what if they... Exactly. <laughs> no, think about that. I, Is that possible? I, I think it's completely possible. That's why they drain cameras. That's why they lights. So a lightning strike, which is so strong, could probably extra haunted that next day. Like, the spirits do a ritual to get yeah. lightning to strike yeah. right there, then they all take in that energy. They dance, they chant, yeah, get in a circle. Yeah, no, that wouldn't surprise me. Actually, I would expect nothing less that something would be more charged after it got hit. Wow. Damn. Wow. Yeah, because think about it, we bring Tesla coils to locations. Yeah, mm -hmm. same and we thing. We use that to fill the room up with energy, and here you go, you got lightning striking it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Just like give a give a spirit like steroids, basically. <laughs> <laughs> can you touch the REM pod? No, I can crush it. <laughs> <laughs> Just destroys it. <laughs> first off, I think like when we started the overnight channel, when the official overnight channel started, the very first video intentionally made for it, you were a part of that. Yes. Um, you were part of the very, very first one for the overnight channel. Yes. Um, that was also the first time we met you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Or do we meet you? Did we meet you for TFIL prior to overnight? I don't nope. actually remember. I think it was about two years ago, right? Yeah. So we reached out to you. Uh, I found you through uh, Lauren, Lord DIY. Yeah. I found her video, and then that's how I found you. And then before I knew it, I saw that you'd been on Ghost Adventures and all these different shows. And at that point, we knew when we started the Overnight Channel, we wanted to work with as many experts as we could, people that knew more than us. And we okay. reached out to you. Um, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of YouTubers reach out to you, right? I feel like you've done quite a few collabs. Yeah, a, a lot of different collabs, but I'm still picky. Yeah, I, was, that, I that don't was, do everything. That's no. what I was going to ask too. No. Like how. How often are you being reached out to? And then like when you, when someone reaches out, like, what are you looking for when you say yes to them? Because I'm looking that they're going to respect what they do. Okay. I mean, I don't care. You could be goofy. You guys are goofy. I love that you guys are goofy you and funny. Say. Ghosts <laughs> like that. Spirits like that. It's like you get scared, laugh, but somebody who's not going to take it seriously other than the goofy part, I, I won't do it. If they're not doing it seriously, if they just want to make fun of it. Yeah. Other than being funny, I won't do it. I okay. just won't do it. You know. I was so happy the day that you 
confirmed that spirits like having fun and like that positive energy because so many of our comments on videos were like, you guys don't take this seriously. All you do is make jokes and all you do is have fun. You don't care and you're never going to get results. And I'm like, eh. and then you came along and you're like, no, they love it. And I was like, call them. Yeah. Like, it, it was, okay. I was so happy because like I had, we had that theory yep. that telling jokes at like the Blair house or just having fun yep. and playing stupid games was like a great way to like have a mutual non-threatening bond mm -hmm. com with Com spirits and then you finally said that and I was like yay yep. completely and they will hang out I mean I know on stuff you know if, what for for filming and TV and for you guys we're gonna go to prisons and all stuff like that but actually happy ghosts are hanging out a lot of places too and they're hanging from the chandelier and having a party because they you know like at the Roosevelt there's a bunch of happy ghosts but if if ghosts were people most of them were do you guys want people here going oh I'm so scared. you know yes we do I'm so scared but just like I'm bored. Be respectful of the ghost. They want somebody funny like you guys. Mm -hmm. And you guys you guys know how intuitive they are, right? Super intuitive. No one agreed. No. <laughs> They're like, no, they, <laughs> no, they you guys really are. Even when you go over it and you've learned so much. It's just amazing. Oh yeah. Really. I mean, there's been so many times during this tour when we're investigating. And if, you know, we're chilling in an area and we're not really getting activity, what I've been doing lately is I'll either start asking do you want to hear some jokes mm -hmm. or do you want to play some music and you can have a party with us? Yeah. And then the tools start going crazy because they want to have fun with us. They want to interact. They don't want it to just be like you said, completely serious the whole time. Yep. Yeah. When we, when we host uh, our paranormal investigations, the main thing I always tell everyone is have fun. Yep. I, and if I see they're not like being like super kind of exuberant and like really showing that they, you know, have that positive energy. I'll make them do like weird things and we'll like, we'll bring everyone in. What did we say last night? Oh God. What, what was, did we say last night? It was, night? A, it was a f money. So oh, it was f money. Yeah. <laughs> someone else so, in the investigation yeah. was like, what should we say on three? And someone was like, I don't know. F yeah. Get money. So, so we <laughs> opened the veil, we opened the veil and then to split up, we said, <laughs> just get money. <laughs> and they all went. <laughs> yeah. but that's and then all the tools went off. <laughs> But that's like what we do. Like we always try and tell everyone like, hey, have fun. Like don't be like super. I had some dude last night, the most hilarious thing ever. All he wanted was a high five from a ghost. Yep. And he literally just walked into every room and just did this and went high five and would just stand there for two minutes and wait for a high five. <laughs> yep. That was his entire investigation last night. I, I was had like, that guy too. I know yeah. exactly who you're talking yeah, it about. Was, it was great. I was like, this dude's awesome. And like we had cool stuff happen. That's good. Did he get a high five? I don't think he See, did. I gave him one. Okay. <laughs> you should go like, high guess. five if he'd been big energy because again whether funny or whatever high energy if you if you're just there being really boring you know, energy whether you're being funny and having fun our vibration rises yeah so vibrations up everybody yeah i think that's like the main thing is like treating i don't, I don't know I, I get it like there's like the fear factor when you go into investigation yeah. and people are more quiet they're more reserved and like you know it's a scary thing but like if you treat the spirits that you're trying to speak to as if they are anyone else in the room. Mm -hmm. If you want them to hold a conversation with you, mm -hmm. if you want them to speak to you and interact with you, you have to like gain their attention and earn their respect conversationally. And like, that is one of those key things where it's like, you go in, you're like, hey, like, how's it going? Like, what's your, you know? Yep. And, it's, and that's been one of those things that we've learned from you and we've adapted. Yeah. And, I, and I truly think is like our, our style now. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So you think that because we're being so silly, they take that high energy that we have and it makes them, it helps them communicate with us easier because there's so much energy going Completely. compared to just, you know. Yeah, because well, they're going to work off their energy and you're going to entertain them. They're probably bored half the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I have a question and uh, we, we've been talking about this a lot lately and like it kind of makes us both like feel sad when we talk about it. But do you think that spirits ever feel like when people are coming in to investigate a lot of people are just treating them like circus animals. Yeah, I, I won't even name names or anything like that, but there is one haunted location that I almost look for like a 1-800 hotline for ghost abuse. Wow. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's just wow. like they are not circus animals. Let's not do this here. Because again, there's not respect. It's overusing. It's over. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we, we've talked about this before. We talked about it on other, on other live shows, but like the plan that we had for this year for the Overnight Channel was to do house calls, um, was to go to... Oh, train. Uh, dude, I was like, I no. 
<laughs> I thought I thought it was fireworks to be honest. I looked for fireworks, um, but just a train going over. Um, we we wanted to do house calls because mm -hmm. we wanted to either help spirits that were trapped in locations or help people that were dealing with spirits that might yeah. be trapped. And I remember when we had the idea, then you were like, oh, you just filmed for Ghost Adventures house calls. And I was like, well, now we can't do the idea because yep. <laughs> um, it literally would have come out like two months after them. And I was like, that just seems like we hijacked their idea. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's part of it. Like we feel like we go to locations and they're like, they're just animals in a zoo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's terrible. But energy gets in the air like that. It does. Like all of a sudden, whether it's TV show or, or whatever, some idea will be floating and three people will get it at the same time. Yeah. Mm. So, so it's just whoever gets there first. Yeah. And then like we've talked about this, how, you know, there's locations where like it's a rule. You're not allowed to help spirits leave yeah you know and i remember i won't say the name but we were somewhere recently during the tour and i asked the room downstairs even, even before i knew it was a rule there but i said do you want me to sage the room down here do you want me to help you get to the light and immediately the person doing Estes method said please do it do it now wow and so do you think that it's a good thing to help spirits cross over and leave and go to the light or should we just let them stay where they are. I think I think you can tell the difference. A lot of spirits hang out just because they can. They're not stuck. A lot of places, especially the dark and scary places, they are stuck. Or there's some bigger entity or some bigger spirit or something created like an egregore that's holding them there. That's mm. the Cecil. There's, they're being held against their will. And those are ones who cross over. A lot of spirits just, they like hanging out there. Even in weird places, this is what they knew. Um, but think about it. If you're the location and if you're making your living on being a haunted location, you don't want some team to get rid of everybody. Yeah. So that's just the, the business end of it. So yeah. what do you prefer encountering? Do you prefer encountering the, the happy ghosts or do you prefer encountering the more aggressive, more difficult ones to deal with? Well, I like both because I get bored. Otherwise, I do like happy ghosts. <laughs> I, get, um, I do like happy ghosts are funny. I mean, just like and they like to be funny. And, and again, chandeliers really do go when there's a ghost hanging on it more than the, I think it moved. Oh, no, it's swinging from air to air. Mm. But I do like a challenge. So the scary ghosts are really great, too, because I, I, I like a challenge. So, so scary ghost yeah. wise, what I've been doing recently is. I've kind of been getting a lot of evidence through SDs and through wow. the ovulus and stuff that they want me to pray for them. Wow. Do you think that when I pray for them, any of the evil or dark energy energies there are going to harm me because I'm doing that? Not usually, because okay. you have protection techniques and everything. Mm -hmm. So going in, again, light beats dark. Light does being dark. And you're coming in from light, whatever the belief system. Um, but on the other hand, you bring a candle in the room. If you're the candle, you really see all the weird shadows. You're going to see all the darkness that's there, too. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's harder to get possessed by doing that, you know, unless it's some really, really, really dark demonic thing. But but I'm the person who thinks that 99% of what people think are demons aren't demons at all. They're just cranky ghosts. Yep, yep. It's just a cranky spirit cranky, saying, yeah. I am Satan. Yeah, I want to yeah. be Satan. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I believe that as well sometimes. And when there really is demonic, there's really not a question there. Like you just know? Yeah. yeah. If you can only investigate one more location what would it be oh it can be somewhere you've never been or somewhere you've been before as far as invest it's weirdly and this is so because i'm not a history person and i'm not a war person i've never been to gettysburg and that's been so high on my list but huh. if i got to go to one place to do an investigation but i want to clear it i want to go back to the cecil you want to go back mm. to the Cecil? I want to go back to the Cecil. I want to clear the Cecil. And I'm going to start Aww. talking to government on that. Well, government won't do it because they're running it now. But I'm talking to press and Associated Press. Mm. I want to do a great big... That's dark. That's really... It's just hotel in LA. And now they're moving in homeless people, which the concept is great. But you get within a half a block of that place and you want to kill yourself. And you want to jump out a window. And you want to... And it really affects people with mental imbalance or drug or alcohol problems, which is everyone moving in. Yeah. So on, on, the, on the equinox, on the fall equinox, I'm going to gather every investigator, witch, psychic, medium, priest, rabbi, shaman. And we're going to do this. And you, if you guys are in town, I want you there. Um, kind of like a, some kind of big old blessing of some sort. Wow. Because the city, I don't want to go against that they're moving people in because that's not fair. There's 700 empty rooms. But even now, people don't want to move into it. Be, 
because it feels so bad. Last yeah. time I snuck in, um, I, there was 30 people had moved in and that's all. And now ambulances are there every day. So I want to do a great big, you know, kumbaya moment. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was going to be, I mean, obviously I think you just stated how you, how you view that, that, you know, repurposing is great, but you're kind of exas- exaggerating or enhancing, yeah. I guess, a problem that already exists because yeah. you are moving in Section 7 housing, which is lower income, yeah. mental health issues, drug issues, and they're going into there for lower income housing, but they're also going into a place that not only are they among other people that are in that same situation, but a building that has a history of it. So is it, do you, do you believe that it's making that problem worse? I, I completely is. When I went there not too long ago, um, I just did another show there, I, uh, Mysteries Decoded, and they wouldn't even let us in. I had to do a whole TV show. It's a, it's a CW show. But the, the week later, I bribed my way in for $100. It's like, <laughs> oh, you guys don't know what you're doing, do you? Um, but anyway. You no. paid a whole lot less than we did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm good. Uh, I'm a witch. Um, no. You should have told me that before I dropped 10 grand. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the people, the few people had moved in. I mean, I know it's it's low income, but they were literally like zombies walking in and walking out. It was like a, we're watching a movie here and it and it wasn't. And and they tried to make this one lobby look like like 60s cool hip pastel colors. It's like oh, um, but that would be it. Now completely change your story about investigations. Let's go save the Cecil. <laughs> All right, let's um let's get into to these stories. Uh, the first one is here. Uh, I did get a note that she has arrived. All the stories that we're getting tonight are, are written by those in the audience. And then afterward, we will uh, bring you on stage and then we'll learn more about it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just ask questions and glad you're here as well. We get a cool perspective on it from, from your angle as well. Um, okay, this story is... Uh, a bit heavy. Um, I'll, I'll say that. So uh, here we go. I was 17 in 1991, Chicago, real Chicago, not a suburb. It was after 10 p.m. on the phone with a friend who had just broken up with their boyfriend. My mom and dad were separated at the time, but he still used the garage as a mechanic. So while I was listening to the teenage grief, I heard my dad's Harley pull in the driveway. I told the friend I had to go because my dad was home and I wanted to talk to him before he left. I heard the huge gate roll out the garage door, open up and the motorcycle pull in, then the garage door closed. Something told me to stay in bed, so I did. And then I heard his van, which was a club wagon, pull away. About 10 minutes later, the phone rang again. I figured it was the girlfriend friend again. So I answered the phone a bit annoyed. It wasn't my friend, but a priest calling about my dad. Confused, I asked who. He again repeated he was a priest from the hospital and he was calling about my father. I argued, stating, what are you talking about? My dad just left to go home. He lived at my grandma's, which was right around the block. And I repeated, You have the wrong person. My dad was here and just left. Until I looked out the kitchen window and saw my dad's van still in the driveway. At this point is when I had to wake up my mother and her friend who was staying with us at the time. My mom was told my father was in an accident and we were to get to the hospital as soon as humanly possible. On the way, we drove past the accident site and my father's bike was mangled. Needless to say, he did not survive the accident. Days later, my mother was worried about me since I was so confused because I kept repeating, he came home. She found a priest who was more open to the afterlife. He was amazing and explained he did not stop at the accident. He continued with his journey and I felt comforted. Time went on and things were happening in the house. Like when trying to wash clothes, the washer door would open so the laundry would stop. It happened several times until my mom's friend said, Joe, cut it out. I need to finish the laundry. And it stopped. I had inherited my dad's stuff, including his large stereo system since it was 1991. He had all the cool new tech. 
I was home alone and the radio turned on. Puzzled, I turned it off, not thinking about it. Then it turned on again and on his favorite station. I turned it off again and figured it was a power surge and unplugged it. It turned on again. And this time, the volume was increasing. The song was either Spirit in the Sky or Dream On. I forgot which one because both have meaning. I said aloud, Okay, Dad, please stop. That one was weird. It never happened again. That is the end of that story. Um, so, Michelle, could you please join us up on stage, please? Give it up for Michelle, y'all. Give it up for Michelle. Here, let me help her up real quick. Boy, I was really shocked that you read it. I'm not going to lie. Why? Grabbed out my daughter. I was like, oh, crap. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to take your drink for you? I can set no, it down. it's my safety thing right now. Okay. But, but thanks. <laughs> okay. So, 1991 yes. is when this happened. Yes. And 1991, you... June 6, 1991. Wow. Yeah, and it still obviously hurts. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, we can, we can read. You mean the way you wrote it with such detail? Like, we can tell, like... It's ingrained in you. Yes. Forever. Yes, absolutely. And honestly, like, it felt good to write it because, I mean, I tell it all the time, like, you know, why'd you get involved in ghost hunting? Well, this is why. <laughs> but it felt good to just write it. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Like, yeah. it was pretty cool to be able to do of it. Of course. Thank, thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Sincerely. Seriously. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and he still well, hangs out. Yeah, actually, he does. Yeah, he does. He <laughs> completely does. And the one thing, when you tell somebody to stop, they usually will stop because, again, this is our realm of existence. So. Yeah. Well, it, he was part of a motorcycle club. He was a big, huge Harley guy. Like yeah. His license plate literally were hog it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, totally cool. Like, <laughs> Actually, his wake had 120 motorcycles on it. It wow. rumbled entire Chicago. Damn. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, um, but his motorcycle club still sees him. They do a huge run from Chicago down to uh, Daytona. Because okay. bike week, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're a um, Florida, Florida guy. <laughs> um, so they'll see that big, huge club wagon following behind him. And they'll see him through the mirrors or whatever. Just making sure that he's safe. Um, they also do a run to a lot of them who have passed by now. Um, they do a run, a memorial run to each one's cemetery. And of course his was first, but, um, there was an almost awful accident and the almost awful accident could have taken out probably seven to eight bikes. Uh -oh. Something of a club wagon was able to stop the other vehicle that it would have ran right into the procession that they were in. Wow. So he is still here. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he is. And I mean, you said there that like it, it stopped in the house. Uh, <laughs> Did it stop for a little while? Has he so, still? Okay. So obviously I've moved out of my mom's house. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> um, yeah. It, so all kinds of stupid stuff. Like I didn't write in there, but in Chicago houses, we, I don't know, Chicago thing, but um, our chimneys, birds would get in there. So from there, they would get stuck into our um, cabinets and whatever. Uh, and birds would go in there all the time. So, and let me tell you, when a dead bird is dead in there, you, you, it's not good. <laughs> so you have like maggots and things like that. Again, we had to tell him, Joe, cut it out. Like, this is gross. <laughs> so, and that stopped. Wow. Um, wow. My mom started to date again. Oh, and, okay. And yeah, yep. we had a probably a 30 pound turkey in our downstairs refrigerator and somehow the refrigerator got unplugged hmm. and it defrosted and it it was a god awful smell because it by then it was ran, rancid and everything else but like he was mad so he was just being real petty he, he was just out here just unplugging a big old motorcycle man was playing 
champs. <laughs> but yeah, so since then, like, little things will happen. Like, I have triplets, so, and they're named after my dad. My dad was a twin. Actually, he was killed in an accident before him. Anyway, long story, ugly. Mm. Um, but when I had that, you could tell with my kids they're there, him and his brother. And you could tell they're watching out for him. And it's just, it's pretty amazing to be able to see that they have a guardian angel over them now. A hundred percent. It's amazing. <sighs> prior, Man. prior to that experience. Yeah. Did you believe? No. I have a 17 year old moron. No. <laughs> I believed in spirits of, you know, going out to a friend's house drinking. No, like, those kind of spirits. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like, that's what, spirits, yeah, for it. sure. And back then, this wasn't, like, a cool thing. Like, ghost hunting wasn't a thing. So it was, like, a, a crow. Do you remember crow and all that? Yeah. So um, this, this wasn't cool or whatever. So if I told somebody, they kind of made fun out of me, except for my friend Rob back there. He's the only one that, rem you know believed me but uh no and then as time went on ghost hunting became more popular and we had seen a somebody was doing um, um, a speech or something at a local ghost or a borders when we used to have bookstores yeah i'm so old so <laughs> i get it so um we went and saw some guy to doing a ghost hunt and we ended up going on the ghost hunt and uh, you guys have stories? Let me tell you, we got stories. <laughs> Ghost hunting stories for fun. But um, yeah, and that's how I started to get more into it because they asked me about my dad and of course I told them that and then so on and so forth and here we are now. <laughs> Long story, I know. And, and this, Sorry. You're good, yeah. And, the, and then this, the priest said that basically he was finishing his journey. His so, the, so the accident happened and he... His it never spirit, stopped him. His spirit continued going on. Correct. So, yeah. yes. Um, so, it, it in real life, it stopped. His body stopped. Right. So, but his entire spirit just kept on going, went all the way home, and the accident spot to where my mom had lived was, I don't know, a couple of miles. So, it was pretty far, but... He told me straight out, because I truly, I am telling you, I argued with this priest. I may or may not have sworn at him. Like, you're out your mind. If he wasn't around, he would have There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, for sure, like, it was the strangest thing. And I kept telling him, no, I'm, you got the wrong person. Like, I'm sorry. This is not nice to do to somebody. You really have the wrong person. They're like, no, no telling you right now it was your dad so then i kept talking to that priest the one who actually kind of believed in an afterlife and they really worked me through being a moron 17 year old he was able to talk to me like a 17 year old would understand mm, okay and since then i've been like you said a little bit more open because he was playing tricks around the house okay. <laughs> have you patty have you heard of anything like this where someone body perishes but their spirit continues fulfilling their like daily routine um yes actually <laughs> I, it has uh, things like but they they turned the porch light on their job was to turn the porch light on things like that the porch light came on um yours is the biggest i've seen that you heard the motorcycle you heard the garage and oh, you heard the car for sure but if he's a probably big man big personality big in life big in death that's oh, yeah. about spirit. So he had to get home to the family. That's what he had to do. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Because yeah, so, a Harley is loud. It's very loud. And as you see, our houses are close together. It was just literally a driveway between. Yeah. So it was a Harley, those big, huge gates that you open and close, and a garage and his big, huge van. Like these are very, very loud noises in between a house. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where he watches your kids sometimes is through a window. Um, there's a, the, he's outside and he watches in through a window and there's shade and light and shade and light, like a divided <laughs> light window. Mm -hmm. Does he have something like that there where the kids are and playing? Yeah. 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 Goose bumps. Ah. <laughs> it's chilly yeah, out. For sure. No, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. And there one is. thing, something yellow, something yellow. Yellow. It's a little something. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I'll You'll figure it out later. I will. She will. Now I will. 
Because <laughs> I'm going to look for it. <laughs> Do you imagine if you like passed away on your way home but continued fulfilling your daily routine and your spirit just like went in the house, popped open the microwave, <laughs> made, threw pizza rolls. made some pizza rolls, and then, just <laughs> <laughs> and then boop. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I never asked my grandmother if she had anything. Really? Now that you mentioned that, like he left my house to go to her house was literally right across the street. Oh, so it could have continued asked. further. Truth. And I never asked. I never thought of it. Oh, that would be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, is she still around to ask no, her? No, no. Okay. But yeah, that I, that's, yeah. Well, it's a little over. Oh, that would be so surreal to know that mm-hmm. like it continued, he continued like through right. your house to, and maybe how far along. Right. And then when the stereo stuff was happening in my house, I did ask her like, hey, have you ever had anything? And she was, extro- oh my God, the woman was extraordinarily religious, like worked in the rectory, the whole thing. So she would never really kind of play around with me about it. Maybe, or she just wouldn't say it. Do you think she did have something happen? I do. But she would not say it. But I'm more curious, like, did he go home to her house? Mm. I don't know. Something to know. So, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but, like, so your kids. Yeah. You think that they've had experiences with him? Uh, One of them's here. The other two are at home, but they're going to be 18. But I, they've had experiences in my house. Like, they had a sock thrown at them. (laughs) 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 True story. (laughs) Um, And certain things like that. But I don't know so much with the one that's here i don't i don't know yeah but i'm, I'm assuming your dad's pretty funny guy oh god that's so all he throwing did. a sock yeah, is absolutely. definitely a dad thing 100%. to do yeah <laughs> yeah. He, yeah he was total prankster everybody <laughs> loved him <laughs> i'm assuming that you said you know hey can you can you cut, cut it out after the radio thing and stop for a little while me. do you do you wish that you didn't ask him to stop like would you would you have rather had no, nothing that at was all? scary. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it. I unplugged it from the wall because I truly thought there was a power surge. Yeah. So I truly pulled it out and I walked out of my room. I don't know. I was doing stupid stuff, and all of a sudden it went back on. And I watched the volume go up. That's terrifying. But but it's but it's your pops, right? You like know it's... what? At the time, you're just looking at it, going, "What the hell is happening?" Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of stop, like reset, and go, you know. And I don't know. That's that's a no. We can't be playing with that, dude. If I'm a dad and I turn into a ghost, I'm smack camming <laughs> all my kids. Yeah. Just a giant hand is gonna drill everyone <laughs> as a ghost. Yes. So was it as time went by, then you processed it and it was like, "Oh, that was my pops." Yes, yeah. and like. Um, we would have parties in the garage because again, we were 17. That's mm-hmm. what we did. We yeah. didn't have ghost hunting and his head would pop. Actually, I think Rob saw him one time. Um, he, you would see his shadow or like his head pop around, but I wasn't afraid then because mm-hmm. I knew who it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so he would join in on our parties totally. But, um, stuff like the actual, like a poltergeist, I guess, activity. No. That was over as soon as I told him, I'm done. Because <laughs> he never wanted to scare you. He no. just, you know, it, it wasn't that. So right. if you ever do change your mind, he'll come back. No, I'm I mean, sure. No, yeah. you know what? You're good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> do not, I am not up for playing with the stereos. <laughs> that, was, that was actually giving me my next question. Was if you could have him at the house yes. still, would you want that? Yes, I actually would. But... But don't be playing with electronics that are unplugged. <laughs> if, even if you knew 100% this is this is dad. Okay, if it was 100%, I'll give it to you. Okay, you would just let him do whatever he wants. Yeah, for sure. Like, you, <laughs> you know, you, you give him permission. He's, you're never watching Absolutely. any show you ever want ever again. Yes. He's just constantly changing the do channel. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> While you're at it, fix my car. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to play with electronics, that's what I need done. If you're going to play with electronics, well, here's a tire pump and go have fun. Right, please. absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. Just, I think it's really beautiful no, what you're thanks. talking about. Seriously. <laughs> thank you. Again, like I said, thank you very much for reading that. That hit hard. Yeah. But And thank you both. Like, seriously, this is totally awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing and writing in. I really yeah. appreciate you coming on stage. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, seriously. of course. Give a round of applause. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm, uh, you got to help. Yeah. All right, Corey. This is yours, bud. Okay. Has your name on it to read. All right, next story. Yes. When I lived in Arizona... You're reading pretty quiet, I think. What? It's not, is he quiet right now? Am I quiet? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's got heckled by a train, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, I wish every time you read it did that. When I lived in Arizona, <laughs> I lived in a small town and apartments on the second floor at the ages of eight to 11. I'm an only child. And at the time, it was just my mom and I. I've had multiple experiences in this one apartment. The first one, I was walking across a square lawn to throw our trash at a community dumpster in the middle of the night. I was about nine and didn't have glasses yet, so my vision was blurry. But when I turned back around to head back to my apartment, I could barely see a little girl in a white dress standing outside the apartment door below mine. I was too scared to look at her, but I needed to pass her to go up the stairs to my apartment. I stayed looking at the ground <laughs> until I got to the stairs and my curiosity was just getting to the best of me. So I looked over and the girl was just watching me with black eyes and I believe was either dirt or blood barely stained on her dress. I just booked it up the stairs and just cried to my mom about what I just saw. We're Hispanic, so she told me I was just seeing things because I was misbehaving, and that's what happens when kids misbehave. Amazing. <laughs> I, I have to hear more you about know, this. Some, some mothers are like, I put you in this world, I'll take you out. This one's like, nah, you deserve demons. <laughs> <laughs> you back talk to me, so here's a demon girl. <laughs> Okay, Ashley, Ashley Porter. I right, give Come it on, up. Give it up for Ashley. Can I say this really quick? Um, okay. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> so you submitted a couple stories in there. Mm -hmm. And and before we get to any more, I want to hear more about <laughs> this because you misbehaved. Your mom said that's why you saw a demon girl. Well, okay, so covered she's, in blood. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if it was dirt or blood. I was kinda like half blind at the time, so it's just what I could see, but she's originally from Guatemala. Okay. So she's had encounters herself when she's misbehaved. So it's kind of like an experience thing. Cause I remember one time she told me she was coming from her grandma's house after fighting with her sister and she saw a dog in a cornfield that grew into a bigger like red eyed dog. And some similar stuff like that. So that's kind of why she said that to me because she's had experiences herself. And what were you doing to deserve seeing <laughs> this demon child? So were you out I think partying? I was, no, I think I was stealing some Halloween decoration because we don't, my mom <laughs> doesn't like celebrating Halloween. So they had like an inflatable like coffin skeleton thing. So me and my friends just took it and then- From we, your neighbor? Like two buildings away. So they didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's like, that's what she gets. I was like, okay, fair enough. But <laughs> Was it worth it? No, because it was scary. I was but like, wait, okay. wait, were you just going to move it two buildings over and inflate yeah. it right there? <laughs> like, they're like, where'd ours go? And it's like, <laughs> we can <laughs> see it. <laughs> where is it? Oh, there, there it is. I wasn't that smart of a kid, so it's just in the moment kind of thing. Oh my gosh, but you really saw this. Like, no, you yeah, really like, saw this girl blurry, in a dress. Though, so it made it even more scarier because I couldn't make out the face. But when I looked back and it was blurry, it's just like black sockets. So I was like, okay that's not sitting right with me and then like i saw the dress it was kind of like a lacy like <sighs> it had like little ribbons up here she didn't have a middle piece it was like very flowy up like outwards but it was just like dark spots so like a stylish like, demon kind of you know what i mean sure like, like the black guy children but like with style yeah like i want to get asked to homecoming <laughs> kind of a demon right <laughs> yeah. sure okay perfect what do you think about that patty what, what kind of spirit or demon would that be with the black eyes and... Well, it could be either a cross between the black-eyed children. Um, did she seem see-through or not see-through? Um, or It was really quick because I tried avoiding her. I was like, yeah. I didn't want to see it at the time. It was in the middle of the night too, so it's even more creepier. And I was just like, I just want to go back inside. So at the time, it wasn't really that see-through. It was kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's also kind of a blur because I've had a lot of trauma. So remembering a lot of older things have been kind of like if you're now but i just know like i get shaky just thinking about it because i don't like it but yeah. um it, it really could have been either it could have been an apparition and they can make themselves look however and they also can make themselves look to what we know you know mm. even the psychology behind stuff if you don't know what a whatever looks like you're not going to see it that way you're going to see it how you do and if you ever had stories like that or saw stuff you're going to create it that way yeah um yeah 
Patty's doing that thing right now. <laughs> she's doing it, guys. I, do I, see her, I see her teeth moving. I'm like, oh, no. Uh-oh. She's about to rock someone's world. <laughs> no, it was actually... Um, it, this whole story is spinning in my head, I, and it's really hard to come up with. But you have seen her before. You just didn't know it. Do you remember having bad dreams? Oh, so actually in Germany, I would like be asleep and then wake up with my mm-hmm. eyes open, still dreaming. But it's not like sleepwalking because I, w- I knew I was awake, but I was still dreaming with my eyes open. It was really weird, but I don't remember seeing her before maybe it's just been such a bad experience like my mind just tried to block it out yeah whether you saw the exact her i think it is a spirit i think you're you are pretty intuitive Mm -hmm. um and i think it was something that you had seen before in dream why you're extra scary even in in dream time so yeah um (laughs) Because I do, you had good, good, big dream life, right? Scary and now and I don't, I don't try to sleep as much because all my dreams have just been kind of weird. A lot of my dreams come true now, so I try to avoid that. Well, wait, it's like been, what? It's specifically just been with boyfriends though, finding out how they cheat on me though. It's just uh, that. Well, no, those, are, those are dreams, those are nightmares. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, but it's just unless you're dreaming like that. of your boyfriend cheating on you, which is pretty weird. I mean, but, that's what happens. But wait, he wait, is wait, gonna wait. cheat. Don't you want to know it? Yeah, I yeah. found out it was just the same person that oh I was like. Oh my god, can you imagine being the boyfriend though? Who's like, how'd you find out? I dreamt it. <laughs> I'm like, no. Well, my mom has dreams of people that pass away before she gets the call. So it's like they visit her in her dreams before like she gets the bad news. It happened with my grandma, it's happened with her uncle and her cousin. Like wow. she just has dreams of how they die and then like an hour later she gets woken up by the phone call. Yeah, they passed. It's crazy. Yeah, my grandma did that exact thing too. So no, I think you have a dream. Like you're really gifted, and the reason it hit you so hard, other than you're a seven year old in the middle of the night, is that there was a familiarity to it. There was a, like a weird familiarity mm-hmm. to it. So, I, and if you want to not have dreams, put a glass of water by the side of your bed and tell everything that's a bad dream to go into the water. I drink a lot of Dr Pepper, so I should do that. <laughs> I drink more water. No, no, no but drink when more. you wake up, when you wake up. Pour out the water. Yeah. Don't drink don't, it. Don't okay. drink it. Because all the negative goes into yeah. the glass of water. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Mental note. So, yeah. Okay. I need to hear more about this ex-boyfriend cheating. Okay. <laughs> what was it? You had a dream so, that he was cheating with someone that you knew and then he was? So um, at the time, I met this guy through Twitter, actually. It was oh, during God. quarantine. And I was like, okay. What was his handle? Put him on blast right now. He's no, trying to, he's trying to become a DJ. I don't need that kind of <laughs> oh, DJ <laughs> cheater. <laughs> but no, it like the dreams don't exactly pan out how it happens. Like the dream I had was we were going on a trip to Paris and he didn't Ooh. invite me, but he blocked me and then started posting pictures with this new girl. But I couldn't see the face in the pictures in my dream, except she had red hair and it was the girl that I was suspected. And turns out he did cheat on me with her. So did they go to Paris? No, oh. but it's just like it has like a random twist in there, but it does have the truth deeper if I look into it. So what? if that makes sense. OK, how did you like confront him? Did you literally go? I know you cheated. I dreamt it. Well, I know it's going to sound crazy, so I never really tell people that I just kind of like a friend told me and like, you know, I just know you cheated on me because I don't need rumors. I'm crazy and making up stories. I dreamt about him cheating on me. I don't know. And then he's like, yeah, <laughs> you caught me. He brags to people or he's bragged to someone that I knew about that he cheated. And on you me. don't want to put a Twitter on blast. What the f- I'm a quiet person. I don't like drama. DJ douchebag. Look, you can be quiet. We can be loud. What the his handle. <laughs> we got to save some other girls from having nightmares. Come on. I'd rather not. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how's it handle I'd rather not. No, sorry. <laughs> well, maybe at least he'll start seeing like scary black eyed little girls in white because yeah. it was bad. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Wait, has this happened with any other ex boyfriends or was in, it just like, the one? In like junior high, like just a random. It's only happened like twice, but the one in junior high, it was just kind of like a just casual dating thing and Mm -hmm. I was looking for him in my dream to walk down the hall to hold hands and then I asked his friend like where he was at in my dream and he was like oh I thought you guys broke up and basically the same thing next day at school I'm looking for him his friend was like he told everyone you guys broke up and I'm like oh so it did happen so are you dating anyone right now yes he's in the crowd (laughs) do you have any dreams yet no. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in the clear now. You're going to tell him if you, if, if you do? 
Oh, he will definitely know. I'll wake him up too. He's the sitting there sweating. He's like, he's like, you can't go to sleep. I can't let you sleep. You guys go home here and take this monster energy drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we drove from Texas, so I got to be up later to do the drive You drove again. from Texas? How Damn. Far, how far was that drive? 15 and a half hours. Wait, why wow. from Texas? Just you wanted to come here? Well, okay, so I live in Texas, but my boyfriend's from here in Chicago, Juliet. Uh, but I met him on COD. They moved to Texas with me. Now we came up here and yeah. Wow. Okay. Damn. Wow. You just meeting all your boyfriends on the internet, huh? <laughs> it just happened. You got, you got Twitter bros. You got COD bros. You got them all. People I know, I just, mm, I know them too well that I don't want to be with them, if that makes sense. Okay, sure. I used to I used to have a girlfriend on Club Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? <laughs> Dancer chick. Pink <laughs> Flipper ninety nine. Yeah, Pink Flipper one seven eight nine. If, if you're like me and probably everyone else here, no, no teenager only does one thing. No teenager teenager goes their entire teenage years and only steals like one Halloween costume. All right, you can you can go back to the teenager. Okay. You can do any uh, wrongdoing that you want, but all you got to do is just see this girl one more time. What would you do? Mm-hmm. Would you steal <laughs> snacks from a grocery store? Would you? What would you do? Maybe steal an inflatable <laughs> Christmas yeah. decoration. You get a little crazy. I honestly don't know because, like I said, it's just the way she looked at me. It felt heavy. And so it's just something about the way she was just turned because, like, she was just facing at me across the field looking, just watching me cross. And I just stayed looking down and then looking back, her head's just turned, just watching. And I don't know, like I said, it just felt heavy. And then everything after that, my apartment didn't seem like little girl related stuff. So. Mm. What, what are the odds you think it was just your mom who knew you stole something and was just like, called up her friend and was like, go now. <laughs> Quick, she's taking out the trash. <laughs> I honestly wouldn't be surprised. She's a jokester too like that, that. But I don't know if she would go that far. I mean, it <laughs> worked apparently. You never did anything wrong again. Uh, <laughs> I, I still was before 13, so I did, you know, teenage stuff, rebellion stuff. But If you saw her again, the little girl that you saw on the dress... Would you ask her why she is appearing to you or would you be too scared? Honestly, I think I would because I am interested in paranormal. I just haven't had really the opportunity to like try and sit down and talk with them. Plus, I'm not really social myself anyway. So I was like, if I can't be social, how do we be social with a ghost? If mm. that makes sense. Like I'm socially awkward. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, like if you do want to talk to her again, I would say like the best way to get her to reappear is you could cut your hand and then put it on a Ouija board. <laughs> and then I'm joking, guys. I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. I have to go to Suicide Bridge first, but No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, or to steal a couple more, you know, Easter decorations. <laughs> yeah, rub your time. blood on an inflatable snowman. Here's, and here's, if you want to make sure you see her, this is what you do. Next time there's like an Easter egg hunt <laughs> when all the kids are like closing their eyes, just go through Take all the eggs, just watch them search for an hour for something that doesn't exist. And then she'll just be standing there, but she'll turn her head and she'll wink at you like, good fucking <laughs> job. That's the best way to get her to come back. Just pranking. Just, just pranking. Yeah, can do just, that. just yeah. pranking. For sure. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank your story. You. Round of applause, yeah, please, thank you. everyone. All right. So we normally do three stories, but we uh, spent a little bit more time on some other things. So instead, we're going to go into the Q&A Ooh. for the, the evening. Okay. It says all-time best moment during an investigation. Ooh, all-time best moment. Yeah. What's what's yours? Not not from not from us though. Like just yours. They take us. Any can't be with us. I'm curious. Okay. I think my other all-time best moment was a scary moment, and it's when um, somebody burst into flames at Marilyn Manson's house. Wow. Care to elaborate? Uh huh. Well, somebody got disrespectful. No, I was doing it. It, it was a house. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I w- it was in my neighborhood. It's a 1920s Hollywood Hills neighborhood. And Charlie Chaplin had built the house for one of his many girlfriends. It was a party house for years. Then the Rolling Stones manager bought it. And the Rolling Stones stayed there. Mamas and Papas, Grand Parsons, all these musicians. Then the person who invented the real life sex doll moved in. Got too scary for him. He moved out. Marilyn moved in. Did he- it start walking around? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Ah. And so sexy. And then Marilyn, and he was there. He was my neighbor for seven 
seven years, and he used to record in this dirt basement. But the house looks like it was built like with sacred geometry, like a Masonic temple. It's four levels, spiral staircases. Literally, there's a, uh, a compass drawn in the floor, like um, for magical practice and stuff. And one kid was just getting, maybe it was a four camera shoot. Maybe he was just, not, not for a movie though, it was a documentary just being a smart aleck, he was starting to say really stupid things. First, great things were happening. The French doors flew open and everybody screamed. I'm going, wow, that's pretty good. good. It happened again. And then just like you over there, wherever you, the, the speaker came on. It was all white noise. It sounded like a spirit box. It wasn't plugged in. The, the radio. But this kid kept getting worse and worse, and I did not call in. I, I let it get away with it, which I have to be in control of that. And all of a sudden, and we're working with a Ouija board, but I've usually I've safely used those since I was little. But the kid sent something really stupid again, and literally not him, but the cameraman facing him. Hello, cameraman! <laughs> um, burst into flames, literally like a V up his back, like angel wings of fire. He was not standing in front of a fireplace or a candle. Everybody's screaming. Um, I, you know, cool medium witch patty becomes, you know, medic patty, which I am. I'm EMT. I drop and roll and I'm calling all my wardian guardians and wards. To, we're done. We're done. Oh my God. Somebody spontaneous combusting on my, that doesn't, that's not good. That is not good. And we're done. I don't care what we're doing. Um, but the guy who caught on fire was a super skeptic. And he's like, no, I'm okay. His shirt just burnt off him like it was synthetic. It was cotton. It should not have gone as I'm watching the blistering on his back. But um, literally he goes, no, I'm okay. I, I, yeah, I have a sweater. He took the shirt off. I, ta I talked to the ghost. And again, very cranky human ghost. And, and just being theatrical because the kid was being an idiot. So he promised he would be good. A, a few more things happened, but we got through it. Um, but that, I've never come. And the cool thing is three weeks later, the cameraman who became a believer immediately, because when you spontaneous, he showed me his back and you guys will know this. He showed me his back and it literally looked like he had got a tattoo of a dragon, open mouth, sharp teeth, winged head into the shape of a serpent. And that was the exact energy, my protectors that I used to shut down the seance. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh my God, you have a tramp stamp of a dragon on your back. <laughs> that is about the coolest thing ever. And it was. Wow. He wrote us, he, he was so excited about it. He wrote a movie about, you know, a Hollywood medium, does all the TV shows, and then a portal opens. He literally wrote it with Stephen Norrington, the guy who wrote League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Blade series. They haven't done it yet, and I hope they do. I hope somebody fabulous plays me, but I, like, oh yeah, she's good. Um, but he, he became a believer right away. But dragons, they're, they're crossroads, and they really can protect you if you get scared out there. Just the energy of dragon. Um, but I actually sat down with the script. This is just an aside. If, if they ever do it, it will. I took a bunch of words out because because a spirit, if some, it, if a, an entity, a spirit, a demon, whatever, does not know the difference of an actor reading a script off a page than somebody really doing it. Mm. If you're saying words, because he wrote the stuff, he goes, but you said that, Patty. I'm like, I know I said that, but that did something with the veil because we were going deep and dark. We we're at Marilyn Manson's house. So um, I go, yeah, but you can't say that. So he changed all the words that they sound just as scary, but that's what happens all the time with cursed horror films. People don't know better. They don't have an expert who knows you know that all the actors die at 27 stuff like that mm -hmm. so, so that that was my go off wild uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah wow that's wild well i really i really hope you all had had a great evening and sincerely thank you all so much for for coming out uh i realize none of you really knew what our live show was going to be uh but thanks for taking the risk with us yeah. and, and having having fun i hope yeah and then marty would you care to come on stage let's do a picture together everyone <laughs>